I am going to do a Scottish castle scene today. Um, I'm using five colours. I'm going to quickly mix up some washes and explain what those colours are. So I'm just from a wash brush squirting about half a teaspoon of water into three wells. I'm going to use a round number 10. I'm going to take this is cerulean blue, about a pea sized blob in to the water. So I've got a nice bright blue. Rinse my brush out, dab that off on the kitchen towel, and they're going to take in some cobalt blue and a tiny, tiny bit. So that was about a pea sized blob of cobalt blue and the tiniest touch of light red. And that's going to just change that into a purpley grey. Just another tiny touch of light red. Light red's opaque, so it tends to be quite a strong colour. So you've got to be a bit more careful with it against the transparent cobalt blue. So that's a really nice purpley grey I've got there. Then the last one I'm going to do is the raw sienna. So this is raw sienna, pea sized blob. And pop that in there. So the other colours I've got is Payne's Grey. So cobalt blue, cerulean blue, raw sienna, light red, and Payne's Grey. I'm going to come on with some water. I'm going to get a nice sky in. I'm going two thirds sky, one third land and water. This is actually Stork Castle from a trip when we went up to the Highlands about 10 years ago. I've got some really good photos. So I'm still using those now. Okay, so I've got a nice water wash on there. I'm going to come on, you see I've, da I've checked my brushes clean, I've dabbed it off, I'm coming into the cerulean blue. Circular motion, I want to keep some really nice clouds. quite a cloudy scene that I'm doing. So keep that circular motion. If you keep your brush pressed down, that will stop the paint going away with you. And rinse that off. Dry my brush off and then I'm going to come into the grey. I'm going to give the grey a little bit of a stir because it tends to settle. Dab it off just a little bit. Should be quite a purpley grey. I'm just going to pop some of that into some of these clouds. The dabbing off just stops it from being too much on a bigger brush that it takes over on the page. You can swap down to a smaller brush as well. You can take little bits into the blue as well. Okay, I'm just rinsing my brush off. It's damp. I'm just going to come in here because I've missed a bit of water there. That's just a little bit of water just to spread that through. I'm going to swap down to a number six now. So I want some more little wispy clouds. So I'm going smaller brush into the grey, giving it a stir, dabbing off. And then I can bring in some little wispy bits. The trick with any sky really is to make it quite random. And when you're doing things like the clouds, is to connect it through the blue and the white. 
so it doesn't look so disjointed sometimes it can look disjointed let's put some wisps in here and then the other thing is just not to overwork it you can just do a little bit let it settle that mix of color will split out i've got some reds appearing which is really nice and you don't actually need to do too much for a sky it's just about speed and having confidence in the color so what i'm doing now is coming in with a little bit more of the gray over the gray so i want it to be a bit darker so we can layer up so as it started to dry a little bit i can just dab in a little bit more where i, want, I might want a darker patch so I just want a couple of those really. And I've got a band of mountains and land that's going to come in here and then I've got water. So water tends to reflect the colours from the sky and from the land. So what I'm going to do is leave a little bit of a band, leave a gap of about half a centimetre and then I'm going to come in with another sky. In effect it would be like I could turn it round and that could be the sky and that could be the water. I haven't quite got enough of my cerulean blue left so I'm just going to mix a little bit up quickly. So don't get too bogged down when you're doing this trying to create a mirror image. As long as it doesn't look obviously different, you will get away with it. It's more about the speed of doing this so that it doesn't dry. We're going to paint everything else over the top of this. Rinsing my brush off, dabbing it off, and I'm coming into the grey. So I want to, I'm just sort of just mirroring the darker areas. So I want a little bit more there, a little bit more there, and I can just have a few dabs through here. Okay, so there are some colours reflected in from the land and we haven't got the land in yet. So it makes it quite confusing, but it's quite useful to get them in at this wet and wet stage. So what I've got is a small flat. I'm just taking the excess water off. I'm coming into the raw sienna and I'm just going to pop a little bit so I'm keeping it horizontal with wiggles and popping in a little bit this will become much clearer once you get the land bits in if it mixes and makes bits of green do not worry I just want a little bit of a reflection to start to come in with the colour and it saves us trying to get it on in a hard glaze later. D I'm dabbing that off again. I'm going to pick up the tiniest bit of light red. Now this is a strong colour so I want you to be careful with it. Dab it off quite a lot. I don't want much left on that brush. I'm just going to sweep some of that through. Again, pick up a little bit of colour, dab it off a little bit. Again, I'm keeping the brush horizontal and doing those little wiggles. I'm going to get that little bit of colour there. Now, I always do what I would do if it went wrong, so you can see what I would do. So, if I've picked up too much colour and I come in and go, oh, that's too much, 
Rinse your brush off. Get the water off. The brush, dabbing it on kitchen towel and then lift. Dab it back off. Lift, dab it back off. Do not dab with kitchen towel. You're going to use your brush, your damp brush to correct it. That's the way to correct it if you come on and it goes very, very strong. Okay, so I'm going to dry that one off and then we'll come back on to do the mountain. Okay, so that's nicely dry now and we've got a line of very distant mountains to pop in. So I'm going to start with a little bit of water. I'm using a round number six. I'm going to come in that little bit higher. I bring on some of the raw sienna first of all just so I can see where I'm going it doesn't matter that this sky behind it as these get darker you'll see different tones coming through anyway so I'm just concentrating on getting a really nice shape I want to keep these nice and light because they're in the distance. So rinse my brush off, dab it off. I'm going to come into some of the grey. So this is the sky grey and I'm dabbing some of that in. Because these are distant, I don't want to be too precise with them. There's some more to come in the foreground. So we, just as we're coming forward, we're going to keep them nice and pale. Just make sure they've got a nice shape on the top edge. I'm very carefully going to dab into a little bit of light red and remember we did before we just dabbed it off on the kitchen towel you can just sweep some of that in you don't want too much because it's a very warm colour and I want these to stay in the distance rinse my brush off dabbed it off on the kitchen towel I'm picking up a tiny tiny bit of the Payne's grey just dabbing in I can dab a little bit off. There's just a few bits that are very dark on the top and this is going to give a really nice contrast to the sky. So that wet in wet section is going to blend and you can follow the line of the land and create those little bits of dark. There's just a couple of these. just gives a really nice contrast to the sky. Sweep down there, that's the line of the land. See, you can use a bit off the, on the brush and keep spreading it round and then it's a little bit lighter in places. And that works quite nicely as well. Rinse that brush off and then I'm gonna come into the raw sienna just make sure I've got plenty there and I'm going to pop in a slightly closer mountain just here so because it's slightly closer it's coming down a little bit further on the page and I'm using the colour straight on to dry so that's going to give me a little bit more power in that colour than it had on the wet in wet wash there. Then I can come into the grey again. And I can dab into the red. You'll notice I've not I'm not rinsing my brush this time. It's another trick really to make sure that those colours bend and it's not too too strong 
and then I'm going to come into the Payne's Grey again just dab some of those little bits in And then I'm just going to let that settle and dry before I come in with the, the ones in front of that. And I'm going to come this way and start where the castle is. So I'm going to come on with just the raw sienna and I'm creating the shape of the island with the castle. This is the castle, the ruined castle coming in here. So this is all with just raw sienna. Just getting that shape in. I'm going to take some of the light red on. You want this to be quite clean, so you notice that I've rinsed my brush in between. So I want this to be much fresher because it's in the foreground. Get these glorious reds in the landscape, in the highlands. And then I'm going to come on with a little bit of the Payne's Grey. I don't, I'm not worrying about the detail of the castle until this has dried off. This is all about just getting the shape in and the shadow where I want it. So this nice sort of dark edge. And I'm just blending through with a little bit of that Payne's Grey. Again, following the line of the land. The castle's a bit darker one side, so I'm just going to get that a little bit darker. So I'm just blending really with the grey that's on the brush. Now, a little trick. I've got a wet brush and I'm just going to just pull out horizontally from each side. That just grounds it in the water. It's great for rocks and for land. So that horizontal pull, that's just grounded that in the water. I'm going to swap now to a flat because I think it's going to be a bit easier just to pop these bits in. And these are quite dark. But I'm going to come on with the Royal Sienna first because I want that same tone. So these are horizontal bits of land or rocky areas. I'm just going to pop those in. The Royal Sienna because I want that same blend of colour. A little bit of the light red, so I'm keeping the brush horizontal. In fact, it comes the other side of the, of the castle as well. And I'm going to dab into the Payne's Grey. I just don't want to eliminate all of the light in here. So I'm going to be very careful, keep it at the bottom edge of each of these lines. And then because it's still wet, it's going to blend a little bit. So that's given a really nice effect. So I'm just looking at these now and thinking I don't want them to be too uniform. These are all in a row, so I'm going to make them not in a row. Make that one a bit longer. Maybe this one a bit longer as well. Just so that it doesn't attract my attention too much. I want the castle to be the focal point. 
and we'll brush a rinse off. And then you can do that same thing, just pull with a damp brush on those ends in a horizontal stroke. Okay, I'm going to dry that off. It's dry now, so I've just got some other bits of um, land really to put in, in this in-between section. So what we really need to think about now is where we've placed these these bits of reflections in and make sure we're getting the, the, the land in that right place. So I'm going to come on the raw sienna. I've got my round number 10 and that's because I want to move quite quickly now. So I'm going to place some land here. The round number 10 is giving me more paint on the brush which means I can move quicker the disadvantage is it's less precise, but for this stage, I'm fine with that. It's about choosing the brush that works for the situation. I'm popping in this land that's reflected here. It tails back this way to a smaller section. I'm going to dip into the light red pop some of that on toward that top section so those two colours are showing nicely rinse that brush off because I don't need that one now and I'm going to come into the grey so this is the grey that we mixed for the sky. I'm going to blend through. Now I'm quite quick at doing this but if you wanted to do a little section at a time you could especially if you're in a hotter climate it makes it harder because it dries quicker. Got those big bits of land appearing now then i'm going to come in with the Payne's gray and this is where you're really focusing on getting a nice shape It's quite dark and dramatic, even though it was quite a, a sunny day with a few clouds, it's still got such a dramatic landscape. Just keep dipping into your Payne's Grey and applying that. These nice dark areas. And it should just blend. If you're coming on and it's drying out too quickly, take on a little bit more of the raw sienna over the top. That's the way to... You shouldn't really ever take a lot of water on because that will watermark and dilute the paint. But you can take more paint on if it starts to dry. focus on the nice shape, the line of the land, those sweeps down what makes it look hilly So you can do that with the grey. You can come back in with a little bit more of the light red if you want as well. Because it's opaque, just be careful that you haven't got too much water on the brush. You can dab it off first and sweep some more of that in. And then clean brush, dabbed off, horizontal. 
So at those points, I just want to ground it in with a horizontal stroke. And then we'll have a little look at the, the castle again. So I'm just bringing on a little bit of the light red, just looking at the shape. If you wanted to go down to a smaller brush you could, I'm just still using my round number six. I try to use the biggest brush I can for the job. A little bit more light red on this side. I'm going to dip into the Payne's Grey. Get these nice dark angles in. This is a ruined castle, so there's not much for you to paint. It's nice and easy. And it's silhouetted against the sky as well. So it works, works well. Nice dramatic. So I'm taking little bits of that grey in, but not too much. What you can do then onto the dry is just sweep a little bit more colour in here. So this is a little bit of the light red going in. We want this bit to come forward. This is your focal point. It sort of sweeps round into the sky. It's a lovely, a lovely scene. If I dip into the cerulean blue, take some of that within here and a little dip into the raw sienna you'll get a hint of green in there as well which will work quite nicely in that foreground area giving it a little bit of a difference just to just to bring this one forward really it's a very muted green which works well with the scene okay I'm going to swap back to my flat And then I'm going to just do a few little bit, little bit more on the reflections, really. Don't want to do a huge amount. I love the scene as it is. So I'm going to pick up a bit of that sky grey. I've got a little bit left. I can dab that just slightly on the kitchen towel. I can bring in, so this is keeping your brush horizontal and you're wiggling and you're coming downwards. This is really hard to explain. Once you get it, it works wonderfully. So keep your brush horizontal. You wiggle, horizontal brush, but you're coming downwards. This is just, it's accentuating that pull out that we did earlier. And it gives a really nice still water ripple effect. You just got to keep horizontal, wiggle downwards. Horizontal wiggle downwards. You can wiggle whichever way you want. Do a little bit this side. So if you come from here, horizontal, wiggle downwards. So you're keeping the brush on the page and wiggling. I can do that with a little bit of the light red. Just be very careful that this is diluted enough. You don't want it to be too strong. I'm taking a little bit more water in and stick to the areas where you've got the light red. So if we've got a little bit there, I've got a bit here, and I can just wiggle down. So I'm looking where the light red is on the picture really. I can put a little bit of a wiggle in. a little bit here I'm going to take a tiny tiny bit of the Payne's grey we're not going to do too much with this this could 
eliminate everything so I'm just again just taking it into a separate well dabbing a little bit of water in and then very sparingly just want to pop in a few darks it's not quite dark enough keep it very close to the rocks basically accentuating that line a little bit don't need a lot of it you don't want to take away from the overall effect that you've achieved a little bit more coming that way because I think that will add to something okay so the last thing before I finished is something that's happened in the background that I've left till it's dry most things in watercolor can be fixed when they're dry so when I put the wet in wet wash on here I've not been too precise with my water on that top line and I don't want that to be smudged in so if I take my flat now it's totally dry I can come over and lift that bit out so I've got a wet brush and I'm just going to agitate the surface keep it horizontal so I'm neatening that edge and then I can just dab off it's just going to give it a little bit of light and then the same this side I've just not been quite as neat as I, as I would have liked and it's not it's not hugely noticeable but it's noticeable to me so I'm going to change it just dab that out and that little bit of light works really well anyway as a highlight on the water and then again we just need a little bit of a reflection in here but not much this is where it, you don't want it to stand out too much so if I take a tiny bit of that Payne's grey just run a line this is very pale Payne's grey you could use the sky grey as well along it's just enough to give it something that it's grounded it to well it's just reflected in the water really you don't want to give too much that way because you want it to be the focal point to be here okay hope you've enjoyed it see you next time